someone's turning 16, and you know what that means. <laughs> Everyone must die, and in my Super Psycho Sweet 16 Part 3, you won't be disappointed. Unless you're expecting a good movie. Skyrotter is on her way to college and the start of a new life when... Uh-oh, her sister calls her out of the blue after two years of ignoring her, and tells Skye she wants to say goodbye in person. Skye's all against paying her a visit, but according to her stupid new friend... So let's go see her. It's only like 40 miles up the road. Only 40 miles? Sure, let's go. So away they went, and with them my attention span. From that point on, this made-for-TV horror is content to just coast along in cliché nirvana because, really, its audience doesn't expect any more. Creepy hitchhiker. I'm not a psycho. Big ominous house. Douches you want to die. <laughs> I'm just playing. Check, check, and check. Just about the only thing this movie doesn't have is an R rating, which results in a super watered down version of a watered down version of an already mild slasher film. Why do you have that? God, you're dumb. To cut things. There's no originality, no scares, no reason a part three should exist in this series. Heck, after The Walking Dead and every other movie on the Sci-Fi Channel, you can't even say this film does much to push the boundaries of gore on cable. Fans of the first two films will probably appreciate the tone and setting of this one, and its utter irreverence toward everything the actual Sweet 16 reality show is known for, but seasoned horror fans won't find much to like here. Outside of a decent performance from Lauren McKnight, who looks frighteningly like a pre-2000 Jennifer Love Hewitt to me, and whom I'd like to see in more movies, by the way, this film is a super bore. Two skulls.